to uh, to start um, to to give a, uh, an impression on maybe the different uh, neighborhoods we have in uh, in the city, since we have also a few people in the, in the call that are still supposed to come to uh, uh, to Rotterdam, but also for the ones already living in Rotterdam, that might be new information, and maybe we show you a few neighborhoods um, you don't know yet. So I'll quickly share my screen again, and then maybe um, Stephen, if you then can comment on uh, on the slides and uh, have a yeah, quick, great, um, yeah, of course, yeah. Let me see. Yeah, great. Yeah, you see, you see an, uh, a small map or a map of of Rotterdam, mostly the the most popular areas, of course, uh, the city center area. Um, uh, Rotterdam North, including the Blydorp area, is very popular area as well. Then you see more on the east side, um, uh, the Kralingen area, the more on the north, the Hilligersberg, that's more the area where the families are living. Uh, some of the international schools are located on that side. And then you have more the urban area in the middle part of Rotterdam, uh, called the Kop van Zuid, the head of south, including uh, the, the, the popular area of Katendrecht and um, Rotterdam West. Um, we discussed a little bit Rotterdam South is not really added here, but over the last few years, it became more and more popular. And a lot of investors are uh, buying properties there to, uh, to have them rented out to, uh, to the uh, yeah, tenant society, especially the expat society in Rotterdam as well. But it, it, um, it improved a lot, Rotterdam South. Yeah, maybe I'll uh, just for the impression. I'll quickly click a bit through uh, through the the different areas. Yeah. If you have any any comments, uh, 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 Stephen, just uh, just uh, let us know. Of course. Yeah. No problem. And, and what we see the 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 we all know that Rotterdam uh, during the World War II has been uh, most of the part has been fully bombed and. Uh, um, one of the positive things of that side is that we're, there are a lot of new uh, built areas. Um, it's getting more and more metropole city, um, high rise buildings, uh, newer buildings, uh, especially around the city center area and the Kop of uh, the Kop van Zuid, so the head of south area. So that's where more the skyscrapers are located. And then if you take a look at the, the north part of Rotterdam, uh, uh, around Blijdorp, Hilligersberg, Kralingen. That's where more the, the monumental buildings are or either built between the 30s and the 50s. So that's where you find the lower built apartments. Uh, yeah, this is more Rotterdam North. Yeah. And then we head to the Kop van Zuid. That's really the, the, the metropole area. There are building a lot. Uh, Rotterdam is, uh, is getting uh, newer and newer by the week. New skyscrapers are coming. They're building everywhere. It's uh, it's, uh, it's it's promising to get a, I think one of the nicest cities of uh, of the Netherlands. We see. I have uh, yeah been crawling and we. Uh... Yeah, crawling is is a popular area, especially uh, for students as well. It's uh, close by the Erasmus University. Um, but as well, a good uh, walking distance towards the city center area. But that's where you find a lot of um, historical buildings. So um, um, built between 1900 and, uh, and 1930, 1940. So a little bit older properties. Um, but what you see is that uh, a lot of investors uh, that bought properties uh, to be rented out, um, they make sure that they are um, um, either renovated uh, the last few years um, uh, new kitchens are added, new bathrooms. Uh, so we are looking just for good quality rentals. Um, and that's what's happening in South at the moment as well. The North part, you see the Hilligersberg area, that's more uh, where the families are staying. A lot of uh, larger houses as well, close to the American school, Japanese school. Um, so a lot of families are staying there. Um, um, it's a very popular area, but it's... Um, um, it's a little bit farther from the city center, uh, so you won't find a lot of students there, um, and uh, um, yeah, people that need to commute either by uh, by car or by bike, uh, they prefer to go there. But mostly larger uh, properties, family houses, instead of the smaller apartments. All right, great, thank you. 
So, um, uh, Stephen, we actually had a, a, a fun conversation already with Jonah. He came uh, a month ago to the Netherlands and he gave already some insights of his uh, relocation experience uh, to, uh, to Rotterdam. So, um, we, um, uh, yeah, maybe one of the first questions to have is um, when. Um, what is the most important tips for actually experts when looking for an apartment? Because what we hear, um, heard from uh, Jonah, he uh, uh, well came in COVID times. So yeah. when he came to the Netherlands, he will thought, well, you know what? I'll, uh, the most important is to have uh, a roof um, and uh, we'll, we'll look for an apartment. And he found it through the internet. Uh, but afterwards when he came and uh, his flight was canceled a lot of times, so yeah. he came one month later than he um, was supposed to. So, for example, he had a lot of bills already on water and elect electricity he had to pay, even though he didn't even have a bank appointment. So, Steve, oh, yeah. what are yeah. your tips um, when experts looking for an apartment in the Rotterdam region? I think the most uh, important um, uh, is to, to define your main preferences up front. So... Um, 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 check what you're really looking for. So it's either a furnished property, unfurnished property, the number of bedrooms, uh, location, of course, and uh, the quality that you're looking for. Um, most of the, the agents inside region Rotterdam, um, they, those are using the, the larger rental websites in Holland, uh, pararis.com and fonda.com, fonda.nl, sorry. Those are the, the, the two largest websites for rental properties. Um, but my advice normally is, um, if you see a property online, get in direct contact with the agent instead of um, start emailing them from the larger websites. Um, if you just get in contact directly with them, either sending them a direct email or giving them a call, um, from my experience at our office, um, that's what we prefer, to have a personal contact with uh, the expert to get a, a good idea on what their preferences are and uh, be in direct contact because then we can really uh, check if the properties that they are seeing online are matching their preferences instead of uh, um, yeah, showing false pictures or uh, give a different uh, Jonas asking question. Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, I would add uh, one thing uh, to completely agree with what you said is um, when we arrived, <clears throat> um, we, we still went and looked at a few places. We weren't, like I said, I wasn't exactly happy with the place that we first uh, arrived at. So we looked at a few other, other places and what we found was you, you look at one and the real estate agent, the agent who's showing you around gets an idea of what you're looking for and can yeah. recommend more places. And also even outside of what you're looking for, they might know, they might have some better perspective on it than maybe what's shown on a website because websites can be confusing yeah. the, the number of rooms it can vary in how it's explained uh you know what is a room what is a bathroom what is all this you know uh, we like, that's uh, true uh, we were saying uh, we had a place with two bathrooms but one's a shower and one's a toilet that's not two yeah. bathrooms so it can be very misleading um you know with a family of four two bathrooms is very important but you really want two toilets you don't need two bathrooms yeah um right. and uh so you you what i was saying is you arrive don't feel like you need to have a place found before you get here take the time meet an agent and that agent will really really uh really show you around their resources yeah, they're yeah, invaluable. That's, that's that's normally what we do as well if we receive a, an, an email from uh, or somebody's reacting on a, a property online uh, either on one of the bigger websites our first question uh, will be towards um, the expat uh, what are your main preferences and what are you really looking for what's your household looking like uh, are kids coming what are the sizes of bedrooms you need because um, there are a lot of properties advertised, uh, for example, uh, a three-bedroom property, and then in real life, the third bedroom uh, is, is like a walk-in closet or doesn't even uh, fit a, a single bed for one of the kids. So um, it, it, will, it, will, it will save you a lot of time and efforts in, in, in first getting in, in, in a personal contact with one of the, the, the agents in, in Rotterdam. Uh, and, and from there on, they, they, they really know the properties themselves. So yeah. they, will, they, will, they will guide you better from there and it will save you a lot of time. 
And Stephen, are there certain questions that expats maybe, let's say, uh, they still want to have an apartment upon arrival already? Um, they're contacting an agency or a, an owner um, uh, digitally already. Are there what kind of questions are maybe the most important to ask? Uh, because I, uh, what also is uh, typical Dutch, of course, that the the floor, if you're renting that it's not always included. Um, True. Can you already yeah. see the difference in the, on the website uh, to know whether what is included and what is not? Yeah, the, the, the larger website uh, the sites, they give you the possibility to select your preferences. Um, in, in Rotterdam, it's, it's quite standard that a property either is fully furnished or is uh, upholstered, unfurnished. Um, upholstered normally means that the flooring is there um, the kitchen is fully supplied, the bathroom, uh, and most of the times either uh, window covers and, and lightnings, but none of the main furniture. And then if you're looking for a, a fully furnished properties, uh, from our perspective, it means that you can take your suitcase and clothes and start living there when moving in. That, that should mean fully furnished. If different, then uh, the, the agents really need to uh, mention that inside the advertisements. Yeah, okay. And um, in how, because um, at the expert center, we also see that some experts have like um, uh, bad experience when working with uh, a certain uh, housing agent. How can you scan to know which uh, agencies are trustworthy or also which websites can I trust and which where where should when did you, you should you have alarm bells yeah um, 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 normally we would say make sure that one of the agents that you are in contact with um, is, is uh, bounded to one of the branch organizations uh, there are two branch organizations in uh, in the Netherlands uh, uh, either VBO, VBO, or NV, NVM. Those are the two larger branch organizations, and um, um, they are making sure that everything is done uh, by law. Uh, we are being checked by our branch organizations, uh, um, so so you're sure that if you're connected to one of the agents that is bounded to the branch organizations, um, you're you're. With a, with a good agency. Of course, there are a lot of agents because uh, I think there are more than a hundred operating in Rotterdam. Uh, and I think only uh, uh, 30 or 40 are uh, uh, bounded to one of the branch organizations as well. Uh, okay, great. Make, make sure that you always see, try to see a property in person, of course. Uh, however, uh, uh, what, we, what we saw a lot during the COVID situation is that uh, we did a lot of viewing, uh, online viewing, so video calls. Uh, it, it can work, but make sure you see the property with your own eyes or either have somebody here um, checking the property for you. Uh, just to make sure that there are no disappointments coming here and you think you're renting a fully furnished property and you come inside the property and uh, uh, there's only a couch and one bed, for example. So make sure yeah, that you. you see either you, you, you are possible you have the possibility to see the property in person or uh, schedule video call. Uh, most of the agencies are doing that as well. Yeah, thank the, you for uh, for the tips. We we, we discussed it um, a, a bit before as well uh, in the past. Uh, what you see a lot that in, on the social networks, uh, people are advertising the properties as well. Uh, try to avoid that. Uh, because a lot of criminals are active in Rotterdam uh, and they're all advertising properties in Rotterdam using pictures they took online of properties that they do not own. They ask people to pay deposits up front, stuff like that. Don't, do not, don't ever pay anything up front. Make sure you see a property, make a deal, first see a rental contract and after that pay uh, uh, the deposits and uh, in the first month of rent. If you see a property online, uh, and you're erecting on a property online through an agent. Um, advertising the property um, legally binds them to work for the owner of the property. And it can never be uh, the situation that they charge a tenant extra fees. Unfortunately, there are a lot of agents still doing that in the larger cities as well, the city as, Rot as Rotterdam. But as long as an, an agent is advertising a property, they work for the owner. 
and uh, they can only ask you uh, if you finalize to pay a deposit and pay the first month of rent uh, and do not pay them any extra fees or uh, commissions or stuff like that. It's not allowed by law and a, a lot of agents are still doing that, unfortunately. Yeah, I think that's very in, in, important information uh, because we, uh, we hear that as well a lot. So that's uh, good to be careful with that. Um, and maybe additional question to that, uh, Stephen, because let's say you, you're you already living here, you're having trouble with your uh, landlord, where can, um, uh, well, internationals go? Is there uh, different institutions or organizations? Where can they ask for help? And especially how can they know what are their uh, own rights? Because we see that a lot of tenants, they are not aware of their rights or what are the rights as a, a tenant in the Netherlands. Yeah, of course. Yeah. The, the... If, if we take a look at the, the, the Dutch law, the, the tenants are very, very well protected using the normal rental contracts in Holland. Um, so it's important that you, of course, check the, the type of rental contract they are offering you. Uh, have it checked maybe as well by somebody different. Uh, but you can expect that one of the branch organizations uh, agents is, is always using the, the, the correct type of contracts, lease contracts. Um, if, if during the, the stay uh, there are any troubles um, um, or, or um, uh, owners are uh, not giving you good service, uh, no maintenance, stuff like that, th there's a commission in Holland. It's called uh, the, the Huur Commissie, the Rental Commission. And they have some tools to calculate your, uh, the, the height of your rent. Um, but as well to show you what your rights are as a tenant uh, in, in case of uh, bed maintenance, uh, stuff like that. Yeah, I think it's really important to know. I, I'll sh I have shared it in the, in the chat that there's the Hu Commissie. So um, please reach out to them um, and give them a call indeed if you uh, want to know what are your rights and not sure whether uh, everything is correct uh, also in, in the contract, for example. There's a, there's a, there's a pointing system in Holland and officially uh, every um, uh, rental property um, uh, needs to be checked on the points. Um, uh, the points are, giving, uh, are given by the, the, the square meters, uh, the, the, the the energy label, uh, stuff like that. If a property uh, is, is not uh, reaching the 145 points, the owner uh, normally is, is, is bounded by the law to have a max on his uh, rental price. Only if he uh, uh, exceeds the 145 points, he's able to uh, decide uh, what the market price would be instead of uh, um, being bounded by the by law and having a max of his uh, rental price. Um, most of the properties above the river, above the river mass, um, um, should come should come easily to the 145 points. But especially in Rotterdam South, you always have to check um, if 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 that's done correctly. The the website of the Huur Commissie uh, is giving an, uh, a, a tool as well to to check on those points. Ah, oh, great. I didn't know about that. So even I learned in this uh, workshop as well. <laughs> as, as, well the city of, as well, the city of Rotterdam just uh, launched a special website uh, uh, to check on the points of the, the rental properties. Very good. Uh, good to know. Maybe if you can uh, also send me that link, Stephen, and I'll make sure that uh, yeah, no I'll share it with the participants. Um, and maybe another question, because we, we're living in very dynamic times and we see um, well, expats are leaving for a few months and going back to their home countries to work remote. Um, is there a way to have well, more flexible contracts or special agreements with the landlords? Um, I'm not sure if, if, there, if, if there's special agreements, but do you have maybe tips around that, what, what to look for in a contract when knowing that you might leave for a few countries uh, for a few, uh, a few months. months or, or earlier. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's quite standard uh, in Holland to uh, have two different type of rental contracts. Um, that's either a contract for an uh, indefinite period with a minimum period of 12 months uh, or to have a temporary contract with a maximum period of 24 months or less. 
And the difference is if you um, agree on an indefinite period with a minimum period of 12 months, it's not possible for a tenant to terminate that contract within that 12 months. Uh, the only possibility you have is to ask the agent to add a, it's what we call a diplomatic clause inside the contract. And that clause will give you the possibility to escape your contract or to terminate your contract using uh, a month as a termination notice. But the diplomatic clause is only uh, normally only possible when you are leaving uh, due to work related reasons or something. So they will ask your, they would, the, the landlord will ask you to uh, uh, show a letter from your employee or stuff like that, that you really have to leave the country. My, uh, my advice uh, these days should be is to ask for um, a temporary agreement with a max of 24 months or less. Because with that uh, type of contract, you can always terminate your contract um, uh, within, uh, of st starting from the first month. You only have to use one calendar month as a notice. So there's no minimum time if you go for the temporary lease agreement with a max of 24 months or less. Uh, so that's really something you have to figure out um, uh, if there's a possibility or if, if there's a reasonable possibility that there might be a chance to leave within the first two years or in the first year is that you go for a temporary lease agreement with a max period of 24 months. Okay, that's actually a really good, uh, good tip uh, to know. Thank you. Um, and um, well, we already, uh, the time flies. So uh, I might have all, um, one last uh, question, except of course, if the audience has question, please uh, feel free to, uh, to ask uh, Stephen uh, as well. But uh, what we often hear as well in, in Rotterdam is, well, it's very challenging to find an apartment. Um, so uh, what uh, is your experience in that? And what is it, are your tips, tips to still find uh, a good apartment within uh, a certain time frame um, when uh, coming to, uh, to Rotterdam region? Yeah, Where to look if, for, yeah. If, 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 if I uh, uh, take a look at in, in how we operate in, uh, in, in our office, Twilwona, uh, it's, it's you know, the two different uh, options that we offer is that you either uh, react on a property that we have listed online uh, and, and, and get in contact with us directly about one of the properties you have seen. Um, but the other service that we are offering is, is, is a full housing assistance service as well. Um, that will mean that we, um, based on the preference system uh, the expat has, we will try to select um, as many of as properties that are um, uh, listed in, uh, in the markets, in the whole local market, with all the other agents and make a list of properties that match your preferences. And from there on, we will be the one uh, scheduling the viewings, um, uh, as well guiding in negotiations, uh, making sure rental contracts are checked, uh, as well um, uh, being available during the, the, the key handover, uh, making inspection of the property, stuff like that. So that's also possible to, to um, ask us for a, a full uh, assistance in that. Uh, in, 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 in that way, we are working for the expat. So we do charge a fee um, uh, when a, a housing package is asked for. Um, but if a property is listed online with our owners as well of course we do not charge any fee because then we are working for the owner but if if an expat is asking us to have a full assistance we will be uh, picking them up uh, from a hotel of wherever taking them around uh, making sure all the appointments are scheduled uh, guide them during the viewings uh, discuss negotiate stuff like that yeah, thank you. I'll also share uh, the website of uh, uh, Twilwoden with you in uh, in in the chat. So if you yeah. need to, uh, if you'd like to get in touch with uh, uh, Stephen and his team, um, then you will find uh, his contact details. So pity we cannot see you, but we you have yeah, such a nice voice, yeah. so we uh, <laughs> we uh, completely understand you, and it was very clear.